state Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. There is only one Faraday's equation. So EMF, induced EMF, I should say, is proportional to the, we use this symbol d phi dt, but you need to know what the phi is. So we need to say that this is induced EMF is proportional to, when you see the d by dt up there, one, uh, that's a differentiation thing. We call it the rate of change. So use that word, proportional to the rate of change. What's the phi? This is flux. But sometimes, instead of, you have many, many, many turns of a coil, so safer to say flux linkage. Sometimes you might add an N here as well. The N is the number of turns. So to be safe, do you want the best answer? You say rate of change of magnetic flux. Flux is an important word. If you do mention linkage, sure, you can throw that in as well. Magnetic flux linkage. So two marks. One is coming from the EMF proportional to rate. Then you say change of flux linkage. Oh, rate of change of flux linkage. Okay, then that's uh, another mark. So this one is a M1A1 combo. You must get the M, then only you are allowed to get the A. Okay, let's go next. A solenoid has coils C of wire wound tightly around the center as shown. So there's two coils here. One is going to create the alternating field. One is going to receive and induce EMF. So the coil C has 96 turns. Oh, must remember these all. Turns of coil, label big, big N. The uniform magnetic flux in the solenoid is given by 6.8 times 10, negative 6. Okay, wait, who is creating the field? Oh, solenoid. See this power supply? You put power supply here, solenoid will have field. And they give us a flux equation. Okay. On figure 10.1, sketch the flux lines to show the direction of magnetic field due to the current in the solenoid. So you see the current, right? Current is going to come like this, out of the positive. I'm going to draw a few here. Da, 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 da. Okay, and come back. So you want to find how the magnetic field looks like, you got to use your right hand grip rule. You need to wrap your fingers around the solenoid. So all the little, little arrows that I draw here, these all will be your fingers that curl like that. So you should see that your thumb should point to the left, telling us that the magnetic field, okay, this one is north, this one should be south. Magnetic field should look something like this. Oh, you have a line so touch up. Okay, so you should, you should have at least three lines that is going through the diagram. It must be parallel, especially inside the field. So let's go like this. Okay, after it comes out, it can start to curve a bit. Try your best to draw. Like, I know my computer drawing is a bit wonky today. And you must draw the correct direction of arrows. So right to left. If you want to be adventurous and draw the loop around, sure, but it's not needed. Lah. But yeah, it does loop around, but you must also draw the lines inside the solenoid. So that is two marks. One for the direction correctly. Okay, so I'm right here. Direction from right to left. And the other mark is you must have at least three parallel lines inside the solenoid. Try to draw inside now, okay? So three parallel lines. As best as you can inside here. That's two marks for part one. Part two. Calculate the average electromotive force induced in C when a current of 3.5 is reversed in the solenoid over 2.4 millisecond. Current induced. Uh. Okay, okay. That's... There's only one equation to calculate current induced. EMF is change in phi over change in time. But this is a coil. There's many turns. So you should add an N here also. Flux linkage. Next step is you need to remember what is phi. 
side note, phi equals to flux, and we calculate that with the magnetic flux going through a certain area, cutting through a certain area. So that is the second expansion to put here. So you need to do a uh, change in B times A, because the field is changing, right? But actually, do we need that though? I don't think we need, because they already gave us phi in terms of I. So, oh, I don't think we don't need, okay, we don't need this here. Okay, okay, okay. Don't need the phi BA, but it's a good to know side note. So let's just go N times 6.8 times 10, negative 6 times some change in I. Okay. Delta T. So when we calculate this, we can take our 96 turns times 6.8 times 10 to the negative 6 times change in I. Okay, here's where you're going to be a little bit careful. There's a very dangerous word here that they like to use in induction. Reversed. 3.5 M is reversed. Means, let's say you have a coil. You will have magnetic field going to the right. When you reverse the current, your magnetic field also changes direction completely to the left. This is double the change. Okay, so you go from, let's say, let's say forward is 3.5, uh, 3.5 amps to 0 amps, and then to reverse 3.5 amps. Which means if I were to calculate the flux, I will have some, some positive flux, zero flux in between while it reverses, and then a flux in the negative direction. So two times the change. So when we do this, you can you can think of it as a two times of 3.5. When you see reverse, think of the times two. And then divide by time. 2.4 milliseconds. Or you could divide the time in two, also can, I guess. So you missed out some some points here. Remember the times two, okay? So this one you should get a 1.9 volts. Don't write two. You must have two SF. So keep stick to your nine 1.9. So one mark will come from the final answer. One more mark will come from let me check my mask scheme again. Ah, you come from the equation of EMF with the N inside. So this one. Equation. It's important that you have your N. If you're missing the N, mm, remember the number of turns. If you didn't have the times 2, you can still get this first mark because times 2 comes later. Okay. So this is using a DC. Uh, DC, what's our DC? 3.5M DC because it's, you know, DC supply. You can just change the field. It will still have induced EMF. But what if you use a sinusoidal alternating supply? It's kind of like what I draw just now. Up here. The magnetic field will keep changing direction. Forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward. Non-stop. Current change direction. Magnetic field also change direction. EMF will also change sign. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So I think we need to describe the EMF that is also going to alternate. So let's write it down. So first things I want to say is alternating. So your induced EMF will be alternating. Or you can also use the word sinusoidal. Going from maximum to minimum, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and just keep alternating. But we need to describe another thing. This one, you should say um, either the same frequency as power supply or out of phase. So there's two other options you can say here to describe. So alternating sinusoidal with the same frequency as your power supply. Or you could also say as a second mark, uh, out of phase with the power supply. 
this induced EMF is out of phase with the power supply. Okay, so one mark is for your first one and the other one, either one of it would be your A1 mark. So if you're wondering like, what, what on earth is this out of phase with the power supply? Where does it come from? Okay, well, it comes from Faraday's law. So Faraday's law is E proportional to D phi dt, right? And we can kind of know that E is proportional to di dt because they told us that phi is proportional to i. So this i here is your power supply. So let's try, let me, I'm going to show you what does the out of phase idea mean. Try draw the graph of, it's a good revision. Uh, let's give the power supply first. Okay, let's just draw power supply as a nice cosine graph. Okay, this is current of power supply. Okay, next. So you need to find the, when you see di dt, uh, basically it means gradient. Uh, gradient of your it graph. So we look at the gradient of it graph. There are some points where the gradient is zero. Top, bottom, top, zero, zero, zero. So here I'm going to mark x, zero, zero, zero. Then there are some points where the gradient is the biggest. So like here and here. But this one is negative, here is biggest positive. So we have a need to have a big value, right? Okay, let me see if I find another color for this. So maximum negative, I'm just gonna change the sign, let's put maximum positive. So we've got a point up here and a point down here. So one, two, three four five this is actually going to be your sine wave like this so you see out of phase really long a cosine become a sine you differentiate a cos it becomes a sine i if it's a cos let's say cos omega t you di dt that will give you negative sine omega t and the IDT is also known as related to your EMF. Oh? So that's why it means whenever you differentiate something, these two graphs, these two alternating graphs will be out of phase. So you can just say out of phase. Just say. Okay, I think that's the end for this question. Nice alternating solenoid question. See you in the next one.